Good morning, church. Oh, I didn't hear you. Good morning, church. Hello. I, don't you love it when people do that? I, yeah. Um, we're going to begin our uh, time uh, in morning prayer today with our pre-service music, which is found on page 46. That's 4-6 uh, in your service folder with God is here today.
To Jesus, I believe. I come to drink from the rock, like giving water from the well, water for all from my heart. Water is flowing from my heart, outward to all from my heart. Water is flowing. Outward to all, I am thirsty, I come to Jesus, I believe, I come to drink from the rock like giving water from the well, water for all from my heart, water is flowing from my heart, outward to all. Water is flowing from my heart, outward to all. I am thirsty, I come to Jesus, I believe, I come to drink from the rock, like giving water from the well, water for all from my heart, water is flowing. To all from my heart, water is flowing from my heart, upward to all.
Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. I think of you 
at night I rest, I reflect upon your steadfast love. I will cling to you, O Lord my God, in the shadow of your wings I see. Let us pray. Creator of unfailing light, deep within our hearts, we long for your presence. Give us the light of your steadfast love that our lives may proclaim your goodness, our work give you honor, and our voices bless you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, 
but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Masa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Word of God, word of life. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So Philip got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? And then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here's water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. Many of us here in Columbus had just begun to sleep last night when Ethiopian churches, about a third of the way around the world, began to welcome the sunrise in their morning liturgies, a sunrise that has only now reached us. About nine hours ago, the sun rose in Addis Ababa to the hymns of our siblings in Christ. On many occasions in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, liturgies are accompanied by sistrums, these handheld metal shakers, and kebaros, large 
sometimes enormous wooden kettle drums that make the liturgies resonate across the landscape as the sun rises. In the circles of the liturgy, the drummers and the most experienced singers are closest to the center, and the less experienced singers take up positions closer to the margins as they learn the patterns, learn the songs, the rhythms, and they dance their way in toward the center over time as they learn. At the center of this gathering this morning here in Columbus in the text from Acts, there is also a dance of learning and movement going on. The Apostle Philip is ostensibly the one giving the answers, but the questions of the Ethiopian court official may be more like that kebaro, that great kettle drum that shakes our morning landscape. The Ethiopian official is reading Isaiah about someone who, in their humiliation, justice had been denied them, and who, like a lamb, had been sacrificed. And so the court official asked about this text, who is this sacrificed lamb? This court official is reading a text about a pattern in which bodies are sacrificed treated as disposable, a pattern in which voices are silenced and lives are taken away. And looking up from these words on this scroll, they ask a question about real-life bodies. Who is this sacrificed lamb? In a sense, this is the question from confirmation class. What does this mean, this text about the sacrificed lamb? And in a sense, it's the question of this assembly. If the theme is embody the word, then where does this sacrificed lamb word take on flesh? Who is this lamb? This question posed by the Ethiopian court official puts a question mark above everything from horizon to horizon and wonders about lives that are treated as acceptable to sacrifice as disposable. And the court official asks, is this slain lamb simply the one who wrote this text, or is something more complex going on? Prodded by this question, the good news that unfolds in this dialogue on that chariot on that road is about how Jesus is the slain lamb. And because of his love and faithfulness, we now recognize him among all the other wounded ones of the world, including in our own bodies. Jesus, the lamb who was slain, has become the good shepherd to all the lambs that the world would sacrifice, all the ones that the world would treat as disposable. Philip is often portrayed as the teacher here, doling out answers to a potential baptismal candidate. But the Ethiopian court official's questions about Jesus' relationship to wounded bodies and the slain lambs of the world may be among the most revolutionary words that we have. Before it settles into an answer, it is a question. Who is this lamb? Who are the slain lambs of our communities? We began this churchwide assembly by wrestling with that question, and it brought us to repentance as an assembly and as a church. This Ethiopian court official's question is a drumbeat that continues to turn us, to change us, and that question is still live and unsettling. Who is this lamb? You know, they kind of come upon the water in the text from Acts. It just appears, but it's as if that Ethiopian court official's question is what is the thing that cracks open the rock in the wilderness, that opens up this fountain of living water in the desert, drawing this Ethiopian court official to the edge of baptism. But there at the water, they ask a second question. 
here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? What is to prevent me? Luke introduces the Ethiopian court official also as a eunuch and as a worshiper at the Jerusalem temple. And scholars tell us that someone with these identities would live within a sometimes ambiguous and sometimes contested social location at the intersection of gender identity and ethnicity and class and religious status. And so their question, what is to prevent me, could have actually been answered with a long list of the ancient equivalents of school boards, state assemblies, religious authorities, conspiracy theorists, corporations, and supreme courts. What is to prevent me? Well, the answer could have been a long listing of names. But these two travelers embodied the word and in the name of the Holy Trinity, they stepped together into the living water of baptism. Water that anoints with honor, immerses us in love and rains down mercy and it drowns hate and domination and fear. It's life-saving water from a cracked open rock, especially when we're living in a desert. Usually when we think about the word that comes to the water in the sacrament of baptism, we think about God's promises beside the water all through scripture, and that's a good thing. But today, we also have words beside the water that are questions. Who is this lamb? What is to prevent me? Part of the word that saves us in this water is the relentless drumbeat of those questions that will not let us go. At an assembly like this, we can sometimes worry that we aren't deciding everything definitively yet and offering clear answers, and certainly, we are called to act in the power of the Spirit. But this text reminds us that sometimes the Spirit gives us questions powerful enough to open up an entire world like a spring in the desert. How many times in your experience has a question broken open the hard rock in some kind of wilderness? When did we see you hungry or sick or in prison? Where do we go from here, Dr. King asked. How long must we wait, Alice Paul asked about women's voting rights. Woman? Who is left to condemn you? What do we want and when do we want it? And show me what democracy looks like and whose streets? Who is my neighbor? Who will go for me? Whom shall I send? How can anyone be born after having grown old? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Where have you laid the body? And who will roll away the stone? Embodying the word means embodying the questions that break open a new world where we thought there wasn't one possible. God has placed that word on our lips and in our hearts resonating in your body and resonating across this body. Well, now it's almost time for evening prayer in Ethiopia. And now it's our turn to sing with the sunrise. In the light of this new day, those questions from the wilderness road sound like a life-giving drumbeat to raise us from our slumbers and to carry us into this day as the wounded and rising body of Christ into whom we have been baptized.
Reveal yourself, O God, as the church and world thirst for your justice and mercy. Encourage leaders numbed by years of uncertainty and grief. Nurture honest and meaningful relationships with our ecumenical partners and neighbors of other faith traditions. Free nations in the grip of war. Release us from division and distrust in all its forms. Trusting you meet the world's longings with your mercy, we sing. Reveal yourself, O oh God, as your creation and creatures cry out in suffering. Restore rivers, lakes, and oceans and their inhabitants. Empower communities demanding clean water. Bring healing to peoples suffering from flood, drought, fire, or oppressive heat. Give courage for an uncertain future on this planet, our home. Trusting you meet the Earth's longings with your promises, we sing. yourself, O oh God, to all who call from their deepest need. Surround with your care all people isolated due to illness, addiction, or pain. Embrace with undying love all who are in prison or awaiting trial. Uphold all experiencing trauma of any kind. For the ones we name in our hearts, and for those who will die this day. Trusting true wholeness and new life is found in you, we sing. On this Thursday, as we observe Thursdays in black, we pray. Mighty Jesus, living word, soothe the bodies, souls, and minds of the victims of sexual or domestic violence. Bring them peace, 
hope, comfort, and strength. Bring abusers to justice and prevent them from causing further harm. Stir up the heart of your church gathered here and around the world that we value justice and healing over silence and shame. Show us the way to your righteousness led by the voices of those who suffer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh, oh, oh. 
of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. The Lord be Water of life, water of birth, water of healing. Thanks be to God. We what? We thank you, O oh God, for waters that wash and claim us. We honor you for baptism, a river of blessing, bright as crystal flowing from our many homelands and into this city. We praise you for Jesus, our Savior. By his cross, our tree of life, you are rooting us in mercy. By baptism into his death and life, you are calling us together, refreshing us for the work of this assembly. Bless the waters of this place, Scioto River and Lake Erie. Bless the saints who have for us, newborn servants of the crucified one. Bless the river of their stories, embodying the word for us, enlivening our faith. Water of death and resurrection, Water flowing for the healing of the world. Heal us. Water of hope reborn. Us Blessing, honor, and glory be to the Lamb, alive and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen.